Hello Western Oregon sports fans and welcome to this edition of Wolves Weekly. I'm joined today for the first time this year by head women's basketball coach Greg Bruce. Coach Bruce coming off a pair of home games this last weekend. Talk to me a little bit first about your first home game, Dixie State. Well, um, first game of the Phoenix Inn tournament this year, Dixie State came in with a uh, record of 3-0 against all Division I teams. Strong opponent, picked up a couple of Division I transfers from the, uh, in the offseason, one from Marquette, one from San Diego, and they were a very formidable opponent. I think I'll be surprised if Dixie State's not in the regional tournament when it's all said and done. They've got size, speed, athleticism, shooters. They got one kid that we couldn't guard. Uh, she's just a really good player. I was proud of the way our kids kept hanging in there and kept fighting back. We got down big early in both halves, but we kept hung in, hanging in there and uh, we did a lot of good things, but we could never just really clamp them down on defense. They were just too hard to guard. And you came back on Saturday against another traditionally very strong team, Humboldt State. Last season they won the CCAA conference tournament and this year they look like another very strong crew. They have some very skilled players, but you were able to get your first win of the season against them. Yeah, that was a good win, Danny. You're exactly right. Uh, not only that, but they've been in the West Regional Tournament the last two years as well. Uh, had a great center in double zero, a couple of really strong wings. And uh, for us to beat them, that was, it's a quality win because they're going to be in the mix in the CCA this year to get back into the Regional Tournament. Uh, I was, we got out to a lead the first time this year that we played well from the start of the game. We were able to build a little cushion instead of always fighting from behind. Several great performances. I know we're going to talk about those in a minute, but a quality win to hold them off at the end. They came, came, came back and started the second half on us. We went from four down or four up to nine or five down, nine point swing there. But our kids have fought this year all year long coming back, and we were able to do that, get back on top, and then we just held them off. Right before we get into those performances, I want to talk to you a little bit of the trend I've seen during your time here. You don't take it easy in the, in the non-conference games at all. You talked about Dixie State and Humboldt, one team that probably will make the West region this year, another one that's been in there the last two years. And you played Oregon, the University of Oregon, to open up your season. Talk to me a little bit about why you choose to stack your schedule the way you do. Well, um, quite honestly, the GNAC is very competitive, as you know. And uh, we're probably going to win the region again this year, the team from our conference. And so I think if we're going to have to play against the Seattle Pacifics and Western Washingtons of the world, Alaska Anchorage, Simon Fraser, et cetera, you've got to learn to do that. And that's why we play a hard schedule early to try to get into games where we know we're going to have to step up to be competitive and play against a better line of athlete on the, you know, on the average. So, you know, I, I think our girls enjoy that. I think they enjoy the level of knowing going in that they're going to have to, to play well to be in it. They're good teams. They're competitive and that just gets us ready for the conference. And speaking of some of those individuals that have stepped up early in this season already, showed up a lot at this tournament early, the one everybody, the buzzword on everybody's mouth was Riley Peterson this last weekend. Talk, uh, talk to you about Riley. You know, Riley, Riley's even surprised me a little bit, to be quite honest with you. I knew she could score. She has a scorer's mentality. She led the state of Oregon in scoring when she was a high school senior at Newport. She went to Clackamas the last two years and put a lot of points on the board. But this weekend, she not only scored, she defended, she got a bunch of steals, she blocked shots. She has an uncanny ability to time herself defensively to block shots even at her 5'10", 5'11", size. She's hard to guard because she has a lot of different ways to score. She can shoot the three, she's got some moves around the basket, she knows how to get around bigger kids, and she has a really good basketball. IQ. She's going to be a really strong player for us. And another one of your seniors that I know you're counting on to do some scoring for you this year, Sarah Zoller scored up, scoring 38 points over the weekend. Yeah, Sarah, you know, Sarah's kind of been the kid that's always been a complimentary player her first three years here. And now without a Katie Torlin or Alita Berkey, now she's got to rise up and, and be a part of that scoring night in and night out. Uh, she's been able to do that. You know, she's the glue. We, we move her all over. She plays two, she plays three, she plays in the post. We've even had her play the point guard position for us at times. They're showing her making free throws. I think she made all 15 in the tournament, I believe. And uh, uh, just a hard worker, comes to practice every day trying to get better. And she's real versatile. And that really helps us. Well, talking about some of those others that step forward. You talked about Sarah Zoller there. But to me, your sophomore backcourt is the one that was another big step up this weekend. Jamie Richardson from Grants Pass, Oregon, came in and scored double figures in both games. And that's what we didn't get from her last year. Last year, she was... She's very competitive and a great defender, 
but she didn't necessarily have the pure offensive game. But she's worked hard in the offseason. Now she can hit a three. She's way improved at the free throw line. She's always been able to take it to the basket, but she's finishing better, and she's a very good athlete. So she gives us another offensive weapon that wasn't there last year. Her maturity level on the offensive end has really been a pleasant surprise. And you also got much improved point guard play from sophomore Lori Clifford. Lori Clifford from Alaska started almost every game last year at the point. Once again, has matured, has added to her game, is more confident. She stepped to the free throw line and made four in a row down the stretch on Saturday against Humboldt. She made a big basket on the baseline. Once again, just a kid that's gotten better because she's gone from a freshman to a sophomore. And I think the potential and the sky's the limit for her as well as she moves through her career. And you mentioned about Lori Clifford hitting free throws. I felt that was one of your big keys this weekend. You guys shot almost 87% at the free throw line, hit 54 of 63 shots. Uh, Sarah Zoller led the way, but in a tight game, which both of them happen to be, those are the, those are the keys right there. Well, that's one of them, Danny. And, uh, you know, we, we figure with our small size, we're going to have to make six, seven, eight threes a game, and we're going to have to make 20 to 25 free throws a game for us to be able to hang with the better teams. So it's part of our offensive attack. We work on it every day. We shoot a lot of free throws. We try to put the kids under pressure so they have to make them kind of as, as a real game situation. And, uh, you know, the girls have done a good job with it. They feel confident at the line and, and I think kind of scares teams a little bit to try to foul us. And that leaves us maybe some more openings to make field goals. We talked a little bit about that right there, but I want to talk about some of your keys to your season moving forward. You talked about shooting at the free throw line. Being a small team, I know that you're also going to have to make some shots on the outside. We are. Um, you know, we, we don't really play with the post offensively. We're kind of a spread attack, five people in the perimeter. We're trying to attack on the dribble to get us to the line or to get layups. Uh, our post players can shoot the three, which helps them become more hard to guard when they're drawing other people's bigger players away from the basket. That's where Peterson's knowledge of the game is so important. She knows when to go back door and when not to. Uh, another kid that's going to come on and is going to be more featured later, later on in her career is Melissa Fowler, a freshman. She also is very athletic and can get to the basket in a hurry. She just doesn't have the, the reps yet to, to really put up numbers, but is going to. So that's definitely part of our offensive strategy. And you also have rebounding is also going to be a key for you with that lineup. We have to because we're not big, so we're not going to get it just by being there. We're going to have to create rebounding opportunities for ourselves especially on the offensive end to give us more possessions. And we can do that by crashing several people. Uh, Zoller, that's one of her strengths is offensive rebound. She's always been a good one. She knows how to read the angles where the ball's gonna come off. And we have to get rebounding by committee. We have to do, have four or five people involved every single game to get their four, five, six, seven, so that we can stay with other teams. Not necessarily beat them, but if we're in that ballpark with them, we'll be okay. And defense is also gonna be a key for you, as it is for any team out there. Yeah, um, you know, we've, last year we really improved, I thought, our half-court defense. This year we've extended beyond that and we're pressing more. We're, we're causing more turnovers. We're getting more steals. Uh, we're still giving up too many layups in my estimation, but that's something that hopefully as the season goes on we're going to try to work to correct. Well, fantastic. And you get some more opportunities to learn to correct those this weekend. You don't take any type of break right away. You come back this weekend and you guys go over to the Clarion Inn Thanksgiving Classic hosted by Mesa State. Right, and uh, we played Mesa here last year and we're, we're, we beat them by nine on our court in our tournament. But they've completely turned their roster over. They only have two players left over. They're off to a 2-0 start. They're averaging 80 points a game and giving up 42, I believe. Ooh. And then the second day on Saturday, we play uh, University of Texas Permian Basin, another Division II school. Well, they're four and one. They're averaging 92 points a game. They scored over 100 three times already. And their lowest amount of points they've scored is 82 in their last game, which they lost 93 to 82. That could be a real track meet. Wow, Coach. We're really going to test all those keys you had for you, that rebounding and defense and everything. But this team has been a very exciting team to watch. Um, we have talked a little bit about the past. You had a fantastic player these last couple of years with Katie Torlin, but you guys really have a complete team effort going out there. And I just know, for me, from a fan standpoint, it was very fun to watch your team play. You guys had Peterson at the end of the game making some great cuts and the girls finding her. Well, I appreciate that, Danny. I, I think one thing, we are more balanced and we are, are, there are going to be different heroes on every, in every different game. And they are a fun group, they're a fun group to coach. And the fact that they've all, they haven't never quit in a game yet. I mean, they've always come back, even against Gonzaga when we were way down, against Oregon when we were way down. They didn't give up. They fought. 
And I think that's what we're able to get over the hump in the Humboldt game, and hopefully we can continue that excitement as the year progresses. Well, thank you, Coach, and thank you for joining me on this edition of Wolves Weekly, and thank you all for watching.